Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, Pastor, recently uh, I was with you when a gentleman from our church stopped you and asked you a question regarding something that was written in one of your devotionals. And what came out of that was that you realized that eternity was something real. So I wanted to ask you today, Pastor, what at what age or at what time in your life did you realize, did you start thinking about eternity? Because the Bible says that we have eternity in our hearts. So was there any specific event or something that, that when you realize that eternity is for real? There was a series of events and, and the events that uh, led me to become aware that, um, you know, that time is short was when I began to see friends of mine uh, dying. You know, when I was um, uh, about 18, I was about 18 years old, a friend of mine named Ray Casada, who, whom I grew up with, I mean, I'd known him since we were five years old, had been a, a friend of mine off and on for years. Um, Ray went to a, a party that was across the street from my house. And at that party, uh, Ray got shot and and died within two or three days and so he was a, a a dear friend to me and that awakened me up awakened me to the fact that even young people die then i had another guy that i knew who uh right around the same time who i had um who had died i, I didn't know he had died but i used to deliver flowers uh, for a florist in uh, the city of whittier and i had to go to rose hills and and as I was going to Rose Hills, I had to take a funeral wreath, a casket wreath, and place it on the casket. That's what I did. And, and I read the card. I just happened to read the card. And the name was the name of somebody I had just a week or two before been partying with at, uh, in, in Whittier. And so I thought to myself, oh, no, he's only 18 years old. It couldn't be him. And I put the wreath on the uh, casket, and I looked in the face of a friend of mine that I had just two weeks before, been uh, drinking beer and, and carrying on with, and I thought, my goodness. And then I had another friend all around the same time, who his name was Dave, Dave Smith, who uh, smoked some marijuana, drank some alcohol, dropped some acid, jumped, jumped on his motorcycle, and plowed right into the, the, the bumper of a parked pickup truck and died instantly. And so these things started happening um, when I was 18, 19 years old, John. And, and I, I, I came to realize that life is short. And then I had my own close calls, more than one. Um, but one in particular, I think was God's uh, wake up call when I had taken some, um, so we used to call them downers, barbiturates, um, they were called Lily F40s. They were a, um, a downer. They, 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 they made you sleepy. And I, I drank maybe, um, well, close to three quarters of a half gallon. I drank most of it myself and uh, almost died of a, a poisoning. And uh, in my car, I was laying there paralyzed. I couldn't move. And I knew a guy, he wasn't a dear friend, but I knew a guy named Freddie Reyes who had died of a barbiturate uh, alcohol overdose. I had just gone to his funeral. I knew how he died. When you die of that kind of thing, you, you get paralyzed. You can't move your head to the left or right. I mean, and you vomit and you'll drown in your own vomit. That's how he died. And some of my, my um, rock star heroes, you know, Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, had died of drug overdoses, so I was familiar of that. It was around the same time that these people had died. And and when I almost died, and I was very close to dying, I I prayed and I said, God, help me. I'm, I'm only 19 years old, you know. So um, I had these encounters, and, and they were getting worse. I was, I had, I had, I had moved into an area of despair in my life that I actually didn't care if I lived or died, John. But when I began to encounter close, close experiences with death and all, I, I began to wake up and I started to say to myself, 
um, I'm too young to be giving up. There's got to be more than this. I, I have to find the reason why I, I was born in the first mm -hmm. place. And so within a short time after, after nearly overdosing on, uh, on the, the reds and the alcohol, uh, that's when I, I came to faith in Christ. Amen. And looking back at all of that, God has had a plan in your life because uh, now you're pastoring our church and we're coming up on a significant date here next week. And so um, we look back at that and, and yes, eternity is in our hearts, yet at the same time, life is short. And your experiences that you've seen with friends, you know, I always think of this pastor, I always think that all of us have an hourglass on, mm -hmm. on top of our head. And since the day we've been born, that sand has been pouring That's out. Right. And uh, one day <clears throat> my sand, your sand, all of our sands will, will be, uh, will be done, and it's what we do with our lives now, you know, and yeah. and so, well, you know that that conversation that you had outside with that gentleman it just really sparked an interest in that. Uh, we live today for eternity when we live for Christ. Every second that you're alive is 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 a, a second that that continues on into your future eternity is before all of us, right? Yeah. And so the decision that we make as it relates to Christ is where we're going to spend it. You can spend it in uh, everlasting torment or you spend it in everlasting joy. Uh, it's my choice. The Holy Spirit provokes me, woos me, convicts me, but I ultimately yield to him. And so every person has an opportunity, is given opportunity uh, in one form or another to to make those decisions. And so it just so happens that I live in a nation that that uh, was founded on Christian principles and the gospel uh, hasn't been extinguished here yet. So there were those in the Jesus movement, the Jesus people, who uh, loved people like me enough to tell us the truth. And that's why I really think that if there's anything that needs to begin to, to reawaken in the heart of the of the church of the 21st century in this day. It's the heart of evangelism. It's the, the heart of understanding that your mother, your dad, your brother, your sister, your friend, your neighbor, whomever, coworker, educator, they're going to hell if they don't know Jesus Christ. And I just don't think people believe in hell anymore at all. Even the church doesn't have a, a sense of urgency, John. And and uh, that we have to wake up to that because you were pretty bad. You you were a bad man. You, you know, you did your time. You you, you took your drugs. You drank. You did the bad things that people do, and yet uh, God's grace was over overflowing to you, and and He saved you. And look at your wife, and look at your babies, and and look where you are now because of Him. And so those are the things that that I wouldn't want to to deny people the opportunity to have and. And if I don't share with them about Christ, if I don't tell them what he can do, if, if they're not aware of the eternity that awaits them without Christ, then then I'm not doing my job. And so uh, I would even hope that some might happen upon this video and, and awaken to the fact that without Christ they're lost and that he died on a cross to save them and and he could forgive them of every every sin that they've ever ever had and that... They can be made an entirely new person with, with hope in a future and, and, and joy that's unimaginable. But you have to turn from your sin. Amen. You have to confess and repent and say, God, I am miserable. I'm a sinner. Father, I need you. And, and if they do that, they can be saved. Amen. And if you're watching this, happen to stumble across this video, you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ. Now is the time. Amen. Just as Pastor David has shared in... And so, Pastor, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, and you know, even if you guys know somebody who needs to come to church, bring them. And Amen. they may hear the gospel. And uh, we do want to invite you guys to come out to our Sunday morning services at 830 and 1045. And maybe the Lord's putting somebody on your heart right now that you can invite to come to church and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, Pastor, thank you so much You're for welcome. your time. Thank you guys for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you.